C.A. Pay, C.A. Pay, back at you with another video. What's up, world? Feeling good this morning. What is today? Today is a Thursday, you know, that day before Friday, and then we get to that young weekend. Um, Please subscribe to the channel. If you've been liking the content, I'm trying to go with different content because it's cold out here in the Midwest, so I can't bring you car and bike content every single day, so I'm trying to change it up a little bit to see how you guys like some of these lifestyle um, some of this lifestyle content, as they would call it. So, without further ado, let's get into today, today's story. Today's story that I want to talk about is gambling. Gambling and gambling addiction. One of my sons I was talking to, he was saying, hey, Dad, you know, with that YouTube stuff, you should probably, like, try to, like, incorporate and talk about more of yourself overall and let the people know who you are be more on camera like you really just specialize on the bikes and the cars on camera why don't you you know talk about yourself in your own life a little bit so i'm gonna open up i can do that i'm a pretty private person but i can do that for my people my subs you know we're almost at a thousand subs so please people please we got like i think 350 to go or whatever it is if you're watching this hit that like hit that like and hit that subscribe button so I can get over a thousand subs as soon as possible. Let's get into it. So I started gambling, I'm 45 years old. I started gambling uh, back in like two, uh, 2013, towards the end of 2013. So we're in 2021 now, so let's say eight years. Um, before that, I had never gambled before, not even a dollar. I had never even played the lottery before. I never done, had never done anything. I started dating somebody. She was Middle Eastern. I started dating her or whatever. And we, she would always go to the casino. Gambling was her thing. I guess, you know, certain Middle Eastern people and so on and so forth and Asians and black, black people, of course, too. It's a lot of races that really like gambling. I mean, really, 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 really do the gambling thing. So she had moved up here from uh, some southern part of uh, Indiana or whatever and uh, she moved up here to Illinois I met her I was approximately about I think I was like 11 years older than her so I was like 37 she was like 26 or something like that and um sweet girl Middle Eastern virgin I, I hate to throw that part in there and say virgin but she was a virgin right sweet innocent girl Moved up here, she had did a little bit of gambling. Man, she got introduced to Rivers Casino. Oh, it was over with. Hey, it was, when I say over with, she was in that place every single day, just nonstop gambling. Before she moved here, she had saved up $40,000 to move here. Within a year, the whole 40,000 was gone, people. She had spent the whole 40,000. Basically, I gave the whole thing to Rivers Casino in Chicago, Illinois, basically. So I was telling her like, man, this is a nasty habit or whatever, you gotta calm down. But when I was talking to her at that time, she had lost a ton of money. Someday, you know, so out of the week, she might win twice, but then the five other days or four other days she might go during that week, she would lose. That's not balancing out the correct way, obviously, right? So one day it was like, her, it was around her birthday or whatever. She's like, hey man, please come on, go to the casino with me or whatever. So in Rivers Casino at the time, it was a place called Hugo's, which is a restaurant, a nice restaurant. It's affiliated with uh, a restaurant called Gibson's Restaurant, but Hugo's is a nice restaurant. It's one of my favorite restaurants. So I'm like, okay, we can go eat at Hugo's. I take it at Hugo's to eat. We're in there munching on down. We get done. Here comes the gambler and her. Hey, please, just, just let me gamble for an hour, please. I'm begging you. I'm like, okay. All right, it is your birthday. So she goes to go play blackjack. She don't play like one particular, she plays everything. She play, she play all the games in the damn casino, all the slides, all the table games, she plays everything, right? So within an hour, she might've played like five different things. I'm like, damn man, you don't keep it to one like particular thing? Okay, cool. So I'm walking around the casino. They don't have, they do have like a little shopping area in there, like a little store that you can shop, but it ain't like one of these big casinos where you got several stores and 
other things to occupy your time or whatever. I've even seen in some casinos that set up damn near like Dave and Buster's or whatever, where they got basketball hoops in there and like video games and stuff like that, where you can just go chill out and take a break or whatever. This wasn't, Rivers isn't set up that way. They do have a little bar in there, two bars at the time where you can go and you can go drink and hang out. I'm not a drinker though, right? So I'm kind of like an introvert the whole nine. So that doesn't interest me in that way either. So I'm just kind of like, I'm just out here. I'm just chilling like, man, I can't wait for her to like be done. I'm walking, I see all these Asians, right? Playing this one game. I'm like, damn, what's this? So I, I sit there for about 10 minutes and I understand the game and it's a game called Baccarat. So what it is, is like Blackjack is the closest to 21. Baccarat is closest to nine. And Blackjack, if you go over 21 on your hits or whatever, uh, you lose or the dealer you bust or the dealer bust vice versa in Baccarat if you go over nine it doesn't matter you still have a chance to win you might be able to win one to zero so each side takes two cards so whoever is the closest to nine wins so let's say if player has six player can't take another card they have six if player has six seven eight or nine they can't take another card uh, same kind of with Banker. If Banker has a seven, eight, or nine, Banker cannot take a third card. You only get three cards on each side, and it's based on if you have a seven, eight, or nine. If each, if any side has, let's say, player has a three and a five, that's eight. If Banker has two kings, which equals zero, player one, there's no other cards to be drawn. But let's say uh, player has a seven, and Banker has a an ace and a four that's five right so banker gets another card if banker selects a three or a four they increase to eight or nine and they win if banker does not increase one of those two cards banker automatically loses because player has a seven so hopefully you guys that follow um basically it has the highest odds in the casino of winning you have two spots to bet on you're either betting on banker or you're betting on player and you're not playing against anybody it isn't like poker where you're playing against other players or it's not like blackjack where like you know uh if i take this hit it, it could affect the next person's you know card that's coming out or whatever it's not like that you're basically playing damn near against yourself you have to come up with whatever system um you want to come up with they have this board that shows what hit last. So they'll say, hey, it was three bankers in a row, or it was four players in a row, or it was one banker, one player, one banker, one player. So that, as we call that, we call that chop. You can also bet the tie. The tie is usually eight to one in all casinos. So the tie is, um, if you're saying both sides are gonna have end with seven, seven, or both sides are gonna end with three, three, both sides are gonna end with zero, zero. Ties happen quite frequently. So once you see a tie, a lot of times a second tie will come. The most amount of ties I ever saw in my life in the eight years was one time I saw seven ties in a row. And that that's not supposed to happen. Usually I might see two or three. I see two quite often. So I get into the game and I'm like, man, you know what? I'm gonna play this, man. Let me, let me see what's going on. So I take $40. I put it on the table, I buy in, I start playing. Hey, obviously everybody knows I'm good with numbers and the whole nine, so I catch on really fast. I take that $40 within one hour, I take that $40 to $520, right? So basically I went, I'm winning like 500 bucks or whatever. I am on cloud nine, right? Anytime I can win money that I didn't really have to work for like that, hey, I'm on cloud nine, I am so happy. I can't wait to see her and tell her you know, I just won this 500 bucks and how happy I am. Okay. I see her. She didn't have a good night. She lost 600. So she's a little mad, but she's happy for me. Okay, cool. I give her like 150 bucks of the cash that I have. She was able to go back and win her money back. So we basically leave um, without, you know, without an L. I'm the one I've, I basically won my money. She gave me my 150 back or whatever. She had won her money back. We leave, we're happy, you know, you go home or whatever it is, you have awesome, great sex and this and that. You had dinner, you, you enjoyed yourself. Her birthday was great, blah, 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 blah. All right. What happens the next day? It's the reason why I don't do drugs. It's the reason why I've never smoked. It's the reason why I've never um, done drugs or, or drank or done anything. 
It's because I know I got an addictive personality. I know if I do something, if I like it, I'm going to do a lot of it. And I know this about myself. So you have to like, see, I knew this from a young age, right? The next day, where am I at right after work? I am back at the damn casino. I'm back at Rivers Casino. I buy in for a hundred bucks. I take that hundred bucks to another 500 bucks. Now, for those of you that play Baccarat, hey, you know how possible this is. Hey, I'm at the time when I first started out, $10, $15 was good enough for me. For lack of a better word, I got a rise or I got a nut off $10 to $15 because I never gambled before. Once you win a few times or once you play a bunch of times, $10 to $15 don't do nothing for you no more. Now you up the ante. Now $25 does something for you. Then at some point, your betting habits change and then $50 does something for you. It, it all becomes addictive and you just keep changing. You keep evolving as a gambler, as I call it. So next thing you know, now $100 does something for you. Hey, then at some point later on, you know, in the months, you know, $500, you're betting $500 a hand. You just get out of control. I win that day. I get up, I leave. The best thing about me, the key word I just said, I get up, I leave. I get up, I leave. I get up, I leave. In the casino, if you can get up and leave, that's the best thing for you. But it's the hardest thing to do in the casino is to get up and leave when you're up. Even if you're up $20, you didn't lose that day. Even if like you've been there playing for four hours and you're down 400 and you get back up 20 bucks, you still leave because you're up. You just had a bad day. Today's That day is not your day. Some, some of us just sit there like, oh man, I've been sitting here four hours. I gotta leave here with four or 500 bucks. And then you end up losing it all and more. The next day, where am I at? I'm back at the casino. I the, After that first initial bet that I put down, my first bet was a $10 bet at Rivers Casino. On the floor table, it was a $10 bet at Rivers Casino and I won that bet. As a matter of fact, uh, Banker was on a run. So I won, I won my first like seven bets. My first seven bets. Other people at the table are telling me, hey man, you gotta increase your bet. This thing is doing whatever. So then I increased the bet as this thing was on the run after like the third one, I increased it to 20 bucks. That's, you know, how, how you start. So then right after that, now player starts running. It went five, then Banker goes back and goes six. So, you know, that now me being more experienced, I know like, hey, that was just beginner's luck. I didn't know any better. I was just throwing money out there and I was just being, I was getting lucky. And it was cool that both sides are kind of running a little bit and started chopping around. Next thing I know, within a 30 day period, I have went to the casino. How many days did you guess? In 30 days, that first 30 days, how many days did you guess that I had, I went to the casino? You guessed it, 30. I went all 30 days. That's what an addictive personality does. You go all 30 days. So now I'm not really thinking I'm doing anything wrong because I'm winning. I won all 30 days. I have not taken a loss in any of the 30 days. Okay, so my birthday rolls around. October comes, whatever it is. We go to a casino down in Joliet. What I've learned, obviously, now being an experienced Baccarat player, depending on the casino that you go to, you don't know, um, like, the cards. They don't, they kind of change, like, things. So, at Rivers, a natural eight might chop, but a natural nine will stay. At other casinos, anything might chop or anything might stay, you know? So I wasn't, so I go to the other casino in Joliet, I lose 300 bucks, I stop, right? So that was my my loss. So I'm such a competitive person, I was so angry about losing, I didn't play for like a week. So then I go back after a week, I go back to Rivers, as I called it at the time, my lucky casino, I win again. Then I branch out uh, come January. I stopped gambling for a bit. And then January comes, like the middle of January, I started back gambling. I went to a casino called Majestic Casino in Indiana. So then that became my lucky casino for some reason. So from January, the middle of January, until 
uh, Memorial Day that year, so the end of May, I had won $59,000. I hadn't lost. I hadn't had any days that I went and lost. Every day I'm going, I'm winning 500, 600, 700. I was up to $59,000 that I had won from the middle of January until the end of May. A very lucky that, you know, I would obviously say. Okay, so now she wants to take a special trip down to uh, Four Winds Casino in like New Buffalo or whatever, Michigan or something. So I'm like, okay, I'm all about it. I wasn't putting the money in the bank, right? I'm like, you know, tipping this one, big tips or doing this, but I basically got a lot of the money in the car with me. We go down to uh, that casino within four hours. I don't know what happened. I felt like a boss this particular weekend. I'm feeling good. I got all this money. It's Memorial Day weekend. I got this pretty girl on my arm. I don't know what was going on with me. My betting habits had already changed in five months. So I wasn't betting $10 anymore, right? So some hands I'm betting 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. I'm betting whatever. All hell breaks loose that weekend, let me tell you. All hell breaks loose that particular weekend. People, within four hours, I had lost $18,000. That's the most money I'd ever lost at anything in my life. I was distraught. I did not know what to do with myself. And one of my bets down there, one of my bets was $5,000. That's how you get down $18,000. Hey, I just kept going and kept going and kept going. I got all this cash. I keep going to the car. I initially only bought in with for $200. Next thing I know, I'm down all this money. I'm down thousands and thousands of dollars and I am not happy about it. I am really upset. So, I'm sitting there. I'm trying to figure out how I'm down this amount of money. Of course she's down. She's down like a thousand. The girl that I came with, she's down like a thousand. She's usually, that's her, she's always down though. The casino, you know, they've already looked at my license and this and that. They know I'm from Illinois, they know it's long drive. They're like, hey, do you want to stay here tonight? They give me this big, gorgeous room. This room was just, this thing was beautiful. They give me this big, gorgeous room. We stay there for the night. I'm sad as hell, so I'm not in the mood. For, for much of anything, I'm just thinking about this 18,000 that's lost. I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna get it back tomorrow. Let me sleep it off, I'm gonna get it back tomorrow morning. I go back down there the next day, I lose another 6,500. So now for a day and a half, or basically not even a day, within a day basically, literally a full day, if you really look at the hours and when I gamble, within a day's time, 24 hours, I am down $24,500 to be exact. I don't know what to do or say to myself. I finally just stopped gambling. We went on back to the crowd, I was so upset. I'm not thinking about, hey, well, Byron, you made, you won 59,000 over this period of time, so you're still up, you know, the difference of that. Hey, relax, man, hey, I'm, I'm just upset. I'm just, not, I'm a sore loser. I'm the guy that literally, Hey, I'm damn near going home ready to kill myself if I lose at something. I don't like to lose. I've been like that through all of high school, whatever. Hey, I take losses very personally. I, I don't do well with losing. I always want to win. So, get back home next day or whatever. Where am I at? I go to Rivers Casino. I want to go back to my lucky casino. Now I'm chasing my losses, right? So I'm sitting up there in my head, it's a math equation. Well, if I win $1,000 a day for 24 days or whatever, I got all my money back basically. Why I'm thinking that way, I don't know. A, the first day I get the thousand. The second day I get the thousand gold again. The third day I lose 5,000. The fourth day I lose 2,000. The third day I lose, uh, the next day I lose 3,000. Then I win 2,000. Then it, So you're going up and down, but I'm losing more than I'm winning. So the next thing I know, basically, uh, before I know it, I am down so much money overall. I'm down so much money. Um, it, it's, it's just not even funny how much money that I'm, I'm overall I'm down at some point. So basically, I gave the 59,000 back. I gave it back probably over... 
what would I say? Maybe, I don't know. I made it in five months. I gave it back maybe in three and a half months. That all started the chain of events of like me just gambling and gambling and gambling. Now, eight years later, I'm definitely like in the hole with the casino. Like they're definitely, they've definitely won. My gambling habits have stopped and changed a, a million times. So sometimes I'll go, I'll lose two grand and then I don't go back for like two months. So I don't know what kind of gambler you would call me. Uh, I am an I am an addictive gambler, right? I am an I'm not gonna call myself an addict, but a lot of people wouldn't call themselves an addict. So I'm gonna explain me, and you guys can tell me in the comment section what kind of gambler am I? Okay, if I'm winning every day, I'm going to go every day. If I take a loss of like fifteen hundred, two thousand, six thousand, or whatever. I don't go back again for like two weeks to a month, sometimes two months. It just depends on how big my loss was. When I don't go, obviously I have a, a nice job or whatever, right? So I make a six figure salary the whole nine. I do well. I got all these homes, cars, you know, Airbnb properties, different things. There's no consequence to my gambling to a certain degree. So what happens is, let's say if I go and I lose six grand, so what? come that Friday when I get paid or whatever it is, my accounts fill right back up or whatever with that six grand, there's no consequence. All my bills are paid, so on and so forth. So maybe some people will look at it as like, oh, you're gambling with your disposable income. You're never supposed to take bill money to the casino, ever. The worst money to gamble with, the most unluckiest money to gamble with is bill money. So remember you heard that here first, do not gamble with bill money. So since there's no consequence, because I got all this, you know, these streams of income coming in, it's just like, but at the end of the day, when you're in there and they put chips in your hand, they remove the dollars from your hand, and they put chips in your hand, man, that, those chips don't even really feel like money. Like me, man, at one point, I didn't care how much money was in front of me. It could be $10,000. I'm putting it all on one bet if I think that that's the bet or whatever. Now, since then, I've become a lot smarter about it, a lot patient. So sometimes I could be down three thousand dollars, and I'll just bet a hundred dollars a hand, you know, for sixty hands until, it, you know, I get all the money back or whatever. So I've had some good nights. Then you have other nights where you're just pushing dollars. You're betting a hundred bucks, but you're just pushing dollars. You win a hand, lose two hands. Win, win two hands, lose a hand. You're just pushing dollars. You have to go in for bigger butt bets and take chances to really like win your money back or whatever and get the hell out of there. Then I start going with other type of betting systems, whether it's the Martingale or some of the other systems where like, okay, I wanna win 150 bucks each day. 150 bucks, let's, let's even do 100. You do 100 each day, that's $3,000 for the month. Hey, that's all your bills pay for the month on $100, right? So you first go in, you do three bets. If you lose all three bets, you just get the hell up and you gotta have the discipline to get the hell out of there, right? So let's say the first bet is 100 bucks. If you win, you leave. Okay, if you lose, now your next bet needs to be $200 to get the other $100 back plus the 100 that you need to be up. You get the hell out of there. Your next bet after that has to be 400 if you lose that $200 bet. Your next bet needs to be 400. If you lose the 400, then you leave. It's going to be it should be pretty hard for you to lose three straight hands at Baccarat in a row. Like the percentages of that, some people are gonna be like, no, I've done it before. Yeah, but if you sit there and you don't bet for like your first couple of hands and you wait and just see how the table's going, how the cards are going, and then you bet those three bets, you should be okay. I've had days where I've went on that system for like two months and it worked perfectly for two months because it worked because my discipline was good. All of a sudden, when I get overly confident, I'm like, you know what? I got some other stuff to do. I want to win 300 today. Sometimes that's when the problem comes in. So now, hey, I bet I get the first bet. Hey, I got my money. I should go out. I should get out of there. My goal is 100. I'm trying to get the 3,000 for the month. Hey, I've done it for two straight months. I have that day where I just completely screw up, go off the rails, can't explain it to you, wish I could break it down and explain it, I can't. Hey, the cars is just not my day. Next thing you know, I am down 7,000, which means what? I lost my last two months worth of winnings plus an extra thousand. Hey, I've done that. I've And so now 
I'm going to work and that's all I'm thinking about every single hour, every single minute of the day while I'm at work, I can barely even focus. I'm messing up at work. People are like, Byron, are you okay? Hey Byron, you're supposed to be on this conference call. You remember this and that? I am thinking about the casino. I am thinking about when five o'clock gets here and it's a bunch of traffic, maybe I'll leave 10 minutes early. I need to get to the casino as soon as possible to try to get back on another run or whatever I gotta do. Just think about that. If you go to work for two straight months, you make $6,000. In one day, in five hours, six hours, seven hours, you give all the money, you give it all up. My mental, man, it was so many times it could have broke me. And I'm not, I don't even, I'm not even calling this video like a success story or something like that. And I'm just giving it to you in the real on what gamblers go through or whatever. You know, again, I wish I would have just never started gambling. So instead of me getting into the semantics of what I won and lost, let me even at least just talk about, I wish I just would have never stopped gambling. It's addictive. I think about it all the time. Um, I lost a couple of weeks ago, so I haven't been back since. I don't know when I'm going back, but um, my loss was pretty significant. Um, usually I don't have, I'm not one of those gamblers that I go two days in a row and then I've lost both days and I go back the third day. I'm not one of those gamblers. If I lose today, a thousand dollars, 1600, I'm not going back for a while. So hey, it's still addictive, but I, I have friends that go take out payday loans. They go every day. They're going to figure out, they're going to go sell a car that they don't need. They're going to go sell their jewelry. They are going to be at the casino every single day. Again, every single day it's their life it's what they do so what i could tell you right now is the wins are just as worse as the losses because the wins give give you a false sense of confidence the wins are just as worse as the losses trust me people what i'm tell what i'm telling you and spitting to you is the truth if other people at the casino have been to the casino they play blackjack baccarat whatever it is when you get a big win hey that's not that's not good people I promise you it's not, because you're gonna be right back there the next day. The key to the casino is, can you get up and leave? And secondly, if you do have a nice win, can you keep those winnings? Will you go invest it in something? Will you go spend it? Will you go, you know, go shopping with it? Will you go pay some bills? What are you gonna do with that money? Or are you gonna give it all back to the casino? So before we get out of here, let me talk about the just man just the, the mood changes what it does to you your mood at the casino when you lose it affects everything around you the casino affects everything around you in general so when i'm really into it and i'm winning at the casino it's a bad thing because other parts of my life are suffering so even when i'm winning i'm still at the casino i'm still at work thinking about the casino all day <coughs> so Let's say if I'm at work, normally, I'm a person that really puts in the hours, right? So let's say if I get off at five, hey, I probably got a project that I need to be worked on for tomorrow or something like that. I'll start working that project right then and there. You know, like at five o'clock. I'll stay till 10 o'clock sometimes just working a project. It isn't about overtime or anything like that. I don't get overtime, I'm the overall manager. So, you know, you're a salaried employee. It's just, I, it's that pride that I wanna put in that work, right? When you're all in at the casino, yo, and you're on a run and you're addicted to that, there is no such thing as, you know, you're gonna work late. Your set, your job, your second job is the casino. So it takes away from work. It takes away from family. You're late for everything. Your son's football game, the this and that. It makes you, I'm not gonna say it makes you a bad person, but it makes you a very unpredictable person. It makes you, when you look back, it makes you a person that you just don't wanna be. So like my family can tell when I've lost and when I've won and different things because my mood has changed. I'm different overall. Um, you'll show up for an event and if you are on time or a little bit late, okay, you got there, thank God. But now you can't enjoy the event because you're thinking about the loss that you took. Now, I can't admit and tell you, you, you will enjoy the event if you, <laughs> if you won, you enjoy the event. It's just the winds aren't good for you because you just keep going. Or let me speak for myself, the winds aren't good for me because I'm an addictive personality. So I won, my thing is to get back there as quickly as possible and win again. 
So I'm thinking like, hey, I don't know how long this street, hey, maybe it's luck. Maybe I'm on a lucky street. Let me keep going. Let me see how far I can take this out. So my longest street was the beginning when I first started. And it was that January to May, right? Middle of January to the end of May, Memorial Day weekend. Then my second longest streak was probably like a two and a half month streak. And then I've also had like a two month streak, meaning no losses for two months, no losses for two and a half months. So I can say, but the problem is when I lose, I lose. So when I lose, I lose like 6,000, 5,000. But when I win, I'm only winning a lot of times. My goal for going in there, you have to set a goal, in my opinion, to be successful in the casino you got to set a goal of like 500, 1,000. You got, you have to set a goal. You have to set a goal like, if I hit this, I'm going to get up and leave. My problem is, honestly, there's been so many times where I've been so confident on that goal or I'm on a winning streak of five or six days of 1,000 bucks or 500 bucks. I get overly confident. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to win 2,000 today. And then that's the day that I lose 6,000. That's the day that I lose 8,000. So... This video is already at 30 minutes, so I'm not gonna talk you guys zero off. I'm gonna see how the comment section does. I'm gonna see how, how many people watch the video, and then I'll come back and do a follow-up video with like other parts and stories about the casino. I met some really cool people at the casino. I met some really messed up people at the casino. I've met them all. I've met Gambling Bob. I've met um, Hollywood Howard. I've met all these different people and women and I've met so many people at the casino and made so many friendships or whatever. All of us are just messed up in there, in there with a common goal of trying to win money. Hey, some of these people, I swear, I think they go to the casino just to lose money. You know, some people, they go in there and they're, you know, trying to do money laundering somehow through the casino. You see all different types of whatever. I've seen it all. I've done it all. Um, I can say now, like, I don't have a story, knock on wood right now, or where I can say, like, hey, I'm one of those casualties of the casino where like I've lost it all. I, in theory, I really haven't lost anything. I've just lost money. I would like that money back. I could, if I had to guesstimate over the eight year period of time, how much I'm probably in the hole, probably not as much as mo most people. I would really have to do the tallies. As anybody knows, I'm a number type of person. So I write down all my wins and losses every day um, for like the last, I would say eight years, seven and a half years. So if I went back and looked through my book, I could definitely give you an accurate number of like, hey, the, here is my wins and losses. You know, I'm down. X, I am definitely down. I'm definitely 100% down. Some of these people are so down, they've maxed out all their credit cards. They've sold like their cars, right? And taken Ubers to the casino. They've done, hey, especially during this time, the car market has been doing better. Hey, it's so many of these people have gotten rid of their cars and they're Ubering to the casino. I mean, Mercedes, all types of cars, like people will do anything to gamble. Hey, some of these people don't have some of the self-control. I have a little bit of self-control left. So I'm not gonna give it all to the casino, right? That's just me. I, I wanna be a success story, not like somebody like, oh man, the casino just took it all. I don't wanna have to make a video like that for you guys one day. So if you like the video, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Please comment to the video and tell me about your casino story. If you guys like this video, if I get a certain amount of likes or if I see, you know, I get over a hundred and something views in the first day on this, obviously I'm gonna do a follow-up video to it because I have so much to speak on as far as the casino. Hey, the top 10 things to let you know if you're addicted, uh, the thing, top 10 things you can do to get out of the casino, you know, and all of it is just, you know, habits. But it, it takes a while. You got to have that willpower. You got to have YouTube is one of my things to get out of the casino. You know, sometimes if you guys look at look back at my video trail, sometimes I might not make a video for one or one and a half weeks, two weeks. It's because I'm on a casino run and like I'm not even thinking about YouTube. Right. Then other times when I'm posting daily, that means that I am not gambling ultimately do it all over again, I would go back and I would never have placed not one bet. I would have so much more going on as far as I'd have, probably have another extra property, a couple more cars. You know, again, it, it's all relative. You got to figure out a way like, hey, how important is this really to my life? <sighs> Guys, my advice, if you're in there and you're in there in a bad way, 
you got kids. I mean, people in there spending their college fund, kids' college funds. People are in there selling their cars. People are in there like um, using their mortgage money to try to get on or whatever. And then they're falling two, three months behind. Their wife or husband finds out like where'd the money go. Next thing you know, it leads to divorce and this and that. I've seen so much craziness go on with people in the casino. I've heard so many horror stories. Hey, we're keeping the lights on at the casino. It's a reason why they keep building casinos. It's because all of us are running in there. All of us keep going to the casino. So they're gonna keep putting them up. Like, hey, that's the business to be in. We should all like get together and start our own casino or something. Like, that's the business, man. Casinos are always open in Indiana 24 hours. Illinois, you know, they do close at some point in the morning, like around whatever, three, four, five, six, and then they open back up like four, you know, three or four hours later after they clean them. But for the most part, these casinos are open, you know, all around the clock. And the casino, casino like people, oh man, they took my money. No, you should really think of it as you gave them your money. The casino ain't took your money, you gave them your money. So that's what I tell the people, you know, I laugh. I never say those words when I'm in the casino. I'm, you know, I, I never say, oh my God, they just took a thousand from me. I always say, I cannot believe I just gave these people a thousand bucks. I cannot believe I just gave these people 2000 bucks. Cause that's really, that's really what happened. I gave them my money. So it's up to me to do better. It's up to me to set a better example and be a better role model for my kids for my grandkids, so on and so forth. I am trying to leave a legacy behind and that legacy that I'm trying to leave behind is not one of gambling. I'm trying to leave a legacy behind of, you know, somebody that, that stood for something. Um, yeah, I worked hard, but I also played hard. And some people call it entertainment. I'm not even sure gambling is entertainment. You know, losing money, that's not entertaining to me. So, I mean, I think that's the misconception that people, you know, tell themselves to justify the gambling habits or whatever. It's like, well, it's entertainment. All right, well, so is going to a movie and it's a lot cheaper. You go to a movie, 20 bucks for the tickets and you know, you buy a drink in there and some food or whatever, boom, it's probably a $50 date or whatever. That's real entertainment or going bowling. Yeah, I mean, there are cheaper forms of entertainment than, I think gambling might be the worst, most expensive vice overall. I think drugs, depending on the drugs you're doing and this and that, it takes you down faster as meaning, you know what I mean? It, it leads to health issues and you, you may die and so on and so forth. But gambling is dangerous too. You know, I, I've seen some people that have lost it all and they like literally the next time I'm talking to their friends at the casino, like, hey, where's John at or whatever? Like, oh my God, you didn't hear? He killed himself. He lost everything. Lost his life savings. He lost this, he lost that. His wife left. He, he killed himself. He couldn't take it all. So, man, I have never called those 1-800-GAMBLERS, Anonymous, and all that. Never went to any other meetings. You know, a lot of the times I'm able to self-correct myself in a way for a while. Um, I'm going to eventually get to the point where I don't gamble at all. I'm going to eventually get there. In some way, I think it could be, you know, I'm God's preparing me for something trying to get me out of this phase to prepare me for other uh, endeavors and things that I'm gonna do. Like I'm gonna be rich one day and I can't, I'm not gonna be able to manage the money that I'm gonna have and you know the prosperity that's gonna come my way. I'm not gonna be able to manage it if I got some gambling habit. So yeah, maybe that could be a justification in my head or something I'm trying to say, but tell me what I am. If you guys think I'm an addict, hey, tell me I'm an addict. I don't believe so. I just think I'm another person that has an addictive personality and I've went overboard at times, but I could also go months without gambling. Some of my friends that are in the casino, I do truly feel they're addicts. They even say that they're addicts because they're there every day. They're gonna rob, steal, kill, do whatever they have to do to go to the casino every single day, whether they've lost or won, they're going the next day and the next day and the next day. Ah, man, some, man, when I go through some of these stories, and I tell you what some of these people have done to get money for the casino, it it's gonna blow your mind. But until next time, my friends, C8 Pay out.